Every single building we sell for installation has a full review on its site and its location. What you would be experiencing inside a building in a windy vent or in a, in a high wind is going to depend on the orientation of our buildings. If your building is facing an open water, that's a particularly uh, deleterious environment. There's a very high wind load coming off open water because there's nothing there to break up the wind. If someone wants our building abutted to a much taller structure in a fashion that it, the snow is going to drift onto it, those are very high demands on the structures, but we engineer it for that application. When we are looking at the snow load effects on a building, there's a couple of considerations. As you might imagine, if you're standing inside the building, the cover's going to get loaded up with snow and you would see the cover deflecting a little bit into the building. So first and foremost, we would look at our site conditions and make our best estimate on how close we need to space the trusses to support that roof structure. If we get into a heavily snow loaded area, we might narrow that in. So you've got more trusses to share the load of the snow that's on top of the building. In our analysis procedures, we use a nonlinear finite element analysis. The reason we use a nonlinear approach is that we know these sorts of structures will deflect under load, and they deflect sufficiently that the actual load paths through the structure can change. The whole building is going to actually deflect in response to those loads, and it will deflect sufficiently that the behavior and the loads that are moving through that truss change because the shape has changed. So some other elements of the design that we consider are what we call our purlins. These are the longitudinal members down the length of the building. We have several different sizes of purlins that we can provide. Wind loading will dominantly start to define which purlin is required. We have bracing cables in our buildings. Typically there would be a set of bracing cables in each end of the building, but in a very heavily wind loaded situation we might need to look at putting two sets of bracing cables in each end of the building. And a very, very long structure sometimes sets in the middle as well our third-party engineering partners, their only interest is in making sure that the building is compliant with the required code specifications and aren't necessarily influenced by the business requirements of delivering the building on price on time. Our ultimate objective is to model the behavior of the building as accurately as we possibly can. The more accurate we can characterize the behavior of the building, given all the wind load, snow load, all the interesting impacts from a particular site, the more accurately we can determine the most efficient structure for the site.